Wilson Law Academy that was held at North Carroll High School was an opportunity for our students to meet and work with uh, legal professionals, including judges, attorneys, clerks from the various courts that serve the Howard and Carroll County jurisdiction. Uh, the students were able to ask questions, interact directly with those staff members, um, get updates on what's happening with the law, uh, how the courts work, and really examine real life scenarios that they may encounter as they uh, move into the real world. We have in this country, and we are fortunate that we do, we have this concept of the presumption of innocence. And what that means is that it's the government, the charging entity, that has the burden to prove, and it must be to a very high standard beyond a reasonable doubt. So as you mature, as you expand, as you grow and travel around the world, you'll see that what we have here in the United States is pretty special. The Civics and Law Academy included three uh, specific sessions for the kids. One, an introductory session where they were introduced in a, for the, to the day. Five breakout sessions where the students got to interact directly with the legal professionals. And the final session where they got a chance to study what it means to become a legal professional in the state of Maryland. <music> Disagree, undecided, agree. Okay, so I'm going to make a statement and then you sort of tell me by walking toward the side uh, whether you agree or disagree with the statement. So you know there's a truck trucks? going through the neighborhood, it has speakers on it, and it's blasting out to everyone. Town meeting tonight, town meeting. Okay, this is at 6 o'clock at night. That might help you a little bit. 6 o'clock. Can you oh. do that? If you're still bothered by it on your own private property, then you shouldn't have to deal with it. So, so the intrusive yeah. nature. So, so of like this. If, it, if it's a speech on TV or like a commercial or something, you just turn it off. But this is something that you can't really go out and turn off this truck. and say I'm really interested in your school um, you get their the college information and they say oh well write down your name and write down your uh, Facebook information so we can friend you on Facebook and they have access to your Facebook when you friend them right how about if you don't want to give it to them do you think that you have the right not to give it to them or do they have the right to ask it because I think you're entitled to your own private accounts and I don't think anyone should be debating that Everything is on the internet. Like if you look something up and your and your account's not private, like you can look me up and you'd see like my Twitter or something like that. And I think that's that's open to anybody and they can deny you because if I'm not, but say I'm selling marijuana or I'm a drug dealer, they can deny that. They don't want somebody in there that's a drug dealer in their school because it's gonna spread and it just it's worse. So I think that they should be able to look at your accounts and deny you the access to their school. And so number one, never give anybody your password, right? That's number one. Number two, are you telling me that everybody's Facebook account is really theirs? That people can post things inappropriate and put it on a Facebook account that's not yours? I mean, that happens occasionally, and that's why, as far as evidentiary evidence, you know, I need a lot to be able to say I'm going to admit a Facebook since we know that other postings can be put on a Facebook. Like, on my job, I'm representing the judges, the district court. So it's like, stuff I post, would they be happy with this? And I get like, is your private page? I should be like, I want to post what I want to. But at the same time, you're also representing A, yourself, and your parents, your school, your job, whatever it be. So like, you'd be like, oh, this has no consequence. I think once someone said like, that has nothing to do with her job. Yeah, but sometimes even when you're on your private time, it's still a reflection of you and the company. tail light out, it may be she's going five miles over the speed limit, but there has to be something that the police officer can point to that says, I think she's breaking the law because of A, B, and C. And just because the police may not have a reason to have stopped that person or you think they may not have had a reason, that doesn't mean that ultimately you're going to prevail because Mr. DeLeonardo's job will be to make sure if he believes that there's an argument to be made as to the legality of the stop, to make the argument. Right, and that's when we talk about, when we evaluate this, so we may look at this scenario, and we may say, well, that 
may be true normally, but here's an exception to the rule that would allow it. So our job is obviously to represent the citizens. Um, and, and in doing that, we have to really balance. The Civics and Law Academy provided an excellent opportunity for our students to interact with legal professionals, to have an opportunity to ask and answer questions about real world problems and scenarios. And I think they learned about the gray area of the law and how it changes over time with new scenarios and new um, issues that come before the courts. Reverend Martin Luther King, he once said, and imagine this, the arc, we know what an arc is, right? The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice.